What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing my match review, match reaction and match analysis of Manchester City's game against Liverpool at Anfield, which has finished one all and it makes a very dramatic now final 10 games, free horse race at the top of the Premier League and Arsenal sitting top of the Premier League as well. So before I do crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe, that would be much appreciated. It is free to subscribe. Now less than a thousand subscribers away from my aim of 35k. Also don't forget social media links, they're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorship for any videos or any general business inquiries. Do leave a thumbs up, 100 likes is the aim. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below, including do you think a point is a good result here for Manchester City or not? Let me know in the comments and why. Finally, this video is sponsored and brought to you by SofaScore. SofaScore will keep you up to date with all the latest scores from around the grounds in football, from England, from Europe, from around the world, as well as keeping you up to date with all the latest scores from all the other sports as well, all in one place all in one app it's a brilliant app to, uh, to go and check out so for score we'll keep you up to date with all the latest match statistics and live standings where who's refereeing games and all your good footballing needs including uh, what channel and what broadcast all the football games are on and everything so do go and check it out it's a very highly rated app it is free to download the link is in the description anyone that does download the free so for score app does help to support the future content created here on my channel so gonna crack on with this video gonna give my thoughts First up, going to give my thoughts about the team selection. Firstly, Liverpool, when I look at their lineup and I see that Trent Alexander Arnold not fit, not in the squad, Andy Robertson on the bench, and they're going with Joe Gomez at left back, and I'm seeing, uh, obviously, with no Trent Alexander Arnold, Connor Bradley starting, and I'm seeing Kwanzaa in the squad rather than Canate. I'm thinking, I'm rubbing my hands at that, I'm thinking, here we go, Manchester City here can really take the game to Liverpool, put that back line under pressure, and try and score some goals. Uh, and ultimately, we saw that from Manchester City. There was no real uh, fear of playing football at Anfield in that first 45 minutes. Manchester City uh, were attempting and trying to create opportunities Opportunities. They were having shot uh, after shot after shot at Kelleher uh, and they were testing and they were causing problems and ultimately helped lead to Manchester City uh, grabbing the opening goal straight from the uh, training ground with Kevin De Bruyne just putting a low ball from a corner into the six yard area for John Stones to uh, tuck away and then Manchester City disappointing for me that we never really built upon that we didn't really force the issue with Liverpool uh, in the remainder of the first half I felt Liverpool just started to grow a little bit more into the game Liverpool looked like they were having a bit of an off day uh, at top of the field and it just didn't really click forward and uh, that first half was a very strange first half of football and I think if I was to have some criticisms of Manchester City I think Man City not putting Liverpool to the sword in that first half because City were in my opinion the better team and were controlling the game much better in that first half than what we did in the second half that we, we, we've scored one goal but one goal is not going to be enough at Anfield you're going to need to score two or three goals if you want wanting to uh, get a positive result and do something we've not done now in over 20 years with fans in the stadium which is go to Anfield and uh, and win that game and I didn't think we found too many ways here uh, of getting the likes of Phil Foden and Erling Haaland to the best very attacking players that we've got uh, not just at the football club but also in the Premier League we couldn't really find too many ways of getting them too involved in this game which I thought was a little bit disappointing seeing Liverpool's back line that filled me as a City fan with a lot of confidence but I think what uh, Liverpool did do really well allowed Virgil van Dijk to be that leader at the back and did really good job there uh, for Liverpool but Liverpool also required on a lot of energy uh, in midfield and uh, you, you're you seeing Alexis McAllister and uh, Sabo Sly and Harvey Elliott really appear and step forward and do a good job there for Liverpool there was a lot of runners there, there was a lot of energy, there was a lot of movement and it was difficult for City to deal with because Liverpool are one of them teams, they don't really tire, uh, so Manchester City when they're put under pressure uh, we can weather storms, we've done that, it's not the first time this season where I've seen teams take the game to Manchester City like we saw in that second half from Liverpool, uh, but it is the first time that uh, Man City have had to change things because Liverpool, they're one of them teams that just don't tire, 
It's not just going to happen for five or ten minutes. If we allow Liverpool to put pressure on us, then we are going to end up conceding goals. Uh, and that's really what Liverpool were pushing for. So I thought Pep, uh, with his well-timed substitutions there with Mateo Kovacic and Jeremy Doku there, just helped City, in particular that Kovacic sub, just get a little bit more control. Yeah, you take off a creative player with Kevin De Bruyne, but you're, you're getting more control in that midfield. And it helped Man City just to, to measure up the game a little bit more and maybe just move Phil Foden into midfield to try something new and uh, we were finding ways for Jeremy Doku to test Joe Gomez once he'd moved from the left on to the right uh, to, to, to cause some problems there and I actually thought Connor Bradley did a, a better job on that right hand side than what Joe Gomez did I'm not too sure why Liverpool decided to take Connor Bradley up I thought he had a pretty good game as I thought uh, Harvey Elliott had a good game for Liverpool as well uh, anyway there we go it is what it is we saw Phil Foden through a bit of luck and a punch coming from Kelleher straight into the uh, midsection of Phil Foden hit the crossbar unlucky Jeremy Doku have a shot late on hit the inside of the post and bounce back out and fall to a Liverpool player again pretty unlucky for Manchester City there were opportunities like we had at the Etihad to go on and win the game we didn't take them opportunities but uh, all in all could we be more clinical yes but we managed to come away with a goal we managed to come away from Anfield with a point and I'm pretty happy with that now I want to speak about the other talking points from this game which takes me on to Liverpool's attacking line Darwin Nunez not didn't have his best game here for Liverpool. Luis Diaz, no way of him involved in that first half. City did a good job on him. Second half, he was having chance and opportunity after opportunity. It was a real nuisance for Manchester City to deal with. And there aren't many players that cause a lot of problems for the likes of Bernardo Silva, Kyle Walker and Rodri all at the same time. But Luis Diaz uh, did manage to do that. But again, just some people weren't really right with Liverpool's uh, attacking line. Even when Salah came on in the second half, there was there something just not quite right for Liverpool. It went quite ticking for them and um, I, I always felt like Manchester City as long as we weren't doing anything uh, stupid at the back we're always going to just be able to defend Liverpool out and we're defensively not the best of sides and it, it took a penalty and it was a penalty it was a poor back pass from Nathan Ake it was a poor read, uh, reading of the game from uh, Edison ultimately ended up picking up an injury um, and uh, Liverpool went on to took the penalty where it was a good penalty from uh, Alexis McAllister as well and uh, they've got the equaliser they got up ahead of steam and just couldn't find that winner and the, the, like City had opportunities Liverpool had their opportunities as well they put City under a lot of pressure as I said there's a lot of running in there it's a very high energy game Liverpool ultimately have had more shots than City more possession than Manchester City uh, and considering the amount of changes that Liverpool have had to have and the amount of first team players not available here for, for Liverpool I think Liverpool will be pretty happy to say that they've gone up against one of the best sides in the Premier League and not managed to lose the game they've come away with a result and uh, my point of view here from City is we've gone to Anfield not lost and come away with a result which I'm pretty happy with yeah it'd have been nice to have won uh, the game it'd be nice to still have the Premier League trophy in our own hands but uh, at the end of the day it's a free horse title race anything can happen we've got 10 games to go 10 cup finals we win them 10 games we potentially go on to win the Premier League if, if we don't it means Liverpool have won every game between now and the end of the season and uh, I will sit there at the end of the season and I'll say congratulations to Liverpool there because winning your final 10 games of the season under immense pressure isn't an easy thing to do Liverpool have put us under this pressure before and we managed to sustain and not crack and it, it takes an elite mentality to do that so this is something a little bit new for City we're going to be the chasing team we've got a chance here to put Liverpool under pressure we've got a chance in our next Premier Premier League game against Arsenal at home for them to go from first down to third potentially that's how close things are and results against each other are key and there's only one more game to be played at the top of the Premier League between them top three sides facing each other and that's Arsenal coming to the Etihad Stadium so must win game that for Manchester City this game for me Going to Anfield and getting a point is a good point, in my opinion. Um, as I said, it'd be nice to win the game, but what Manchester City need to focus on here is 10 games, 10 wins, and go from there. Not going to be easy to do. Uh, it's going to take a lot of focus. It's going to take a lot of energy. No real room for rotation, so Man City are going to need to balance and manage their squad very well. Um, but ultimately, in terms of this game, it's a good point. Maybe some are disappointed because of the changes that Liverpool made. Liverpool... 
probably quite disappointed for the stats and the opportunities that they had and the amount of pressure they put City under in the first half. Probably feel like they should have won the game and City maybe feel like they've escaped from Anfield with a point when maybe there'd have been t instances where maybe Liverpool have had their strongest eleven available and out there may have, may have come away with the win. Ultimately, they haven't. I'm sure Liverpool fans will be focusing on that opportunity right at the end where uh, Jeremy Doku goes in with a high foot referee, doesn't give the penalty and VAR doesn't give the penalty. I think City were a bit lucky and got away with one there. Um, and ultimately, we've come away with the point and Liverpool have come away with a point. Uh, same result as what we had at, Anf uh, at the Etihad, as what we've had here at Anfield. One all, it's as you were. Uh, it's exactly as I thought this uh, game was going to be, which is both sides uh, content and settled to settle this Premier League title, not against each other, but against other teams in the Premier League. And it's them 10 games that City have got coming up that decide this Premier League title for me. I still think if City win our next 10 games, we win the Premier League. I think anything less than 10 wins for City... I don't think we do win the league. Uh, so it's all about Arsenal, Liverpool, City. Who's going to have that consistency? Who's going to have that uh, pace to win the Premier League? Who's going to have the nerve to be able to do it? City have been here before, done that, worn the T-shirt. We know what it takes. I back the boys. I back Pep. It's out of our hands right now. It can very easily in the next Premier League match day go back into our hands as well. So uh, there's no time in dwelling on things. We've got new, we've got a week off. We've got Newcastle coming up in the cup. We don't play any Premier League football now for three weeks. I think uh, Liverpool will be frustrated. I think there's some City fans and players maybe a little bit frustrated. I think the happiest uh, people right now in England are Arsenal fans and players uh, managing to come away with a hard-fought win yesterday against uh, Brentford at home and ultimately now on goal difference, which could be absolutely crucial come the end of the season, sit on top of the Premier League and Manchester City. We're 11 goal difference behind uh, Arsenal. Uh, so winning that game at the Etihad against Arsenal is absolutely crucial. One big cup final come and gone. We've got a point. We're getting towards the, uh, the, the, the stance now where a point isn't good enough and we're needing wins. And I, I think Man City have got a bit of leeway here with that. Arguably, I could say that we've got a bit of leeway against Arsenal as long as we don't lose that game. It, it kind of keeps things as you are, but the, the problem I have is that more than likely City go four points behind Liverpool with nine games to play and it takes some catching up. So, to me, it's a must-win game against Arsenal. Arsenal as well, it's a must-win game for them against Manchester City and there's, it's just squeaky bum time. There's plenty to play for. Uh, for Manchester City, it can easily go in our favour as what it can to go out of our favour. We need to be careful. Ten games, ten wins... That's where the focus needs to be when it comes to Premier League football. Yeah, there we go. They're my thoughts. Do let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comments below. Also, don't forget as well to leave a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. 100 likes is the aim. Do subscribe if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on. It's free to subscribe. Social media links there in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Also, don't forget as well to go and check out today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. Thank you very much to Sofa Score for sponsoring this video. Do go and check them out. As I said, it is a free app to download, very highly rated. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because they sponsor me. I think they're a brilliant app. So uh, you're missing out if you've not got it. Do go and check it out. And anyone that does download Sofa Score using my link in the description does help to support the future content created here on my channel. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow where I'm going to digest more about the permutations and speak a little bit more in detail about the remaining 10 games for uh, what to expect from Arsenal, from Liverpool, uh, and from Manchester City. So I will see you guys for that video tomorrow so i've been jsgc thank you everyone for watching hope everyone is safe and well a point is a good result at anfield trust me it is peace ciao for now <laughs>